Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to BC314, our course on media and technology in ministry. Thank you for joining the class today. I'd just like to request somebody to pray with us, and then we will get started. Somebody could pray with us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the class that you have given us, Lord, as uh, we learn about media and technology, Jesus. God, I pray that uh, you will help us to understand the things and uh, to apply it in our ministry, to know uh, the positives and the negatives and to apply it in a right way where it can uh, edify your people, Jesus. Uh, build us up in this skill so that uh, we can shine brighter for your kingdom. We give Pastor Ashes into your hands. We thank you uh, for this life and for the valuable teachings that he is giving us. And I thank you for all my classmates. Give us a good Wi Fi connection for the session. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. So, um, Let's pick up from where we paused last week. I'll share my screen, share the PDF, and then we have to So last week we spent some time talking about websites and a little bit about emails. Uh, we'll just quickly run through it. So we said. We need, you know, as we think about digital engagement and it's relating to people online, uh, we need to have a strategy and you know, how we are going to reach the people, people inside the church, people outside the church, people who are the congregation, people who are the crowd, try to understand them then reach them. And then also evaluate um, progress, how we can, you know, do how we do things and so on. So and there are a lot of examples. Numerous people can share examples of how they have effectively used digital engagement to serve people. There are lots and lots of ex examples. Uh, and um, yeah, so and then we start talking about websites. So having a website is quite important these days. Uh, people expect a church or a ministry to have a website, and that's where they will go to, you know, get information uh, about the church. And so uh, I think. My personal thought is, uh, it is the moment you know you, you, your ministry has started. It's good to have at least a basic website and let the website grow uh, over time. And uh, so, some thoughts we had shared. You can use what is known as a content management system. There are lots of con different content management systems available. Some are sim very simple to use. Some have lots of more features and so on. You can get some people to help you. Choose a nice domain name. These days, registering a domain name is very easy. Um, you know, it just takes a little amount of money, small amount of money. You can get a nice domain name, use something that people will remember. Uh, so use a hosting service provider. They will register your name. And uh, you know, there's, again, many, many hosting providers, depending on which part of the world you are in. You'll find something that's cheap and easy. Uh, build a nice website. Um, uh, have some, you know, some logical structure. Uh, we call it information architecture. Um, have a logical structure to your website, and you know what people will be looking for. That that information should be available. Um, and make it very pleasant, meaningful, and you know uh, some of the things that you could do is collect information. Those are visiting your website and so on. Connect your website to social media accounts. Uh, optimize your website for search engines when people search. They'll find you, and then keep in mind that actually, you know how search engines are working these days are changing. It's always changing, and now even more because of the introduction of uh, artificial artificial intelligence and uh, related technologies. The way these search engines are working are changing. Before, uh, I'll just give it give you an idea of how it's changing. Before, search engines used to look for you know words, uh, phrases, but now the engine search engines have become more intelligent. They, they actually do um, what is known as sentiment analysis, and they actually 
uh, not only they, they actually go and not only read words and phrases that are being used in the website, they in some way understand the meaning of what's being said. You know, so search engines are changing how they are uh, uh, working with content that's being put on the website. So the meaning, they're looking at the sentiments that are being expressed, uh, so on and so forth. So it's going beyond what I have written here. Uh, it's changing. And so we also need to keep our websites uh, in, in a similar way, make it you know more relevant to these engines. And the other things, you know, use URLs that are search engine friendly, the phrases that people search for, you should have it in your URL, in your content. Add your uh, website to Google Business, it's free, you can do it. Link back to your website from other places, you know, if you know of other people or other places where you post the content, you link back to your website. Uh, and there are a lot of, uh, you know, places that, you know, you can mention your website and link back to it. And then submit your website to Google Search Console. It's also free. Just log in there. Just submit your URL. The URL that you own, you can submit. And that the search, Google search, what we call them the crawlers, they crawl through your website, rank your pages, and make it visible to other people. Now keep your website content updated. Don't, you know, uh, old content you remove, keep it updated. Also, uh, use URLs that are easy to remember, like APCW or RG slash servers. People can always remember that. And uh, so on. And we also shared last week a little bit about our websites, how it's been optimized. And uh, we've you know, optimized our websites for certain phrases for which we want to uh, rank very highly around the world. Right? So uh, that's uh, Emails. Uh, I forget. Did we cover emails last week, or we did? We did do emails. Okay. So I think we just stop. Yeah. Should we stop here? All right. Let's pick up from here. Emails are an uh, important way to keep in touch with people, right? And um, you can keep people informed, sending them emails. Um, now, uh, of course, the first step is to collect email addresses. Uh, so you, if you have a subscription form, a small form where they get into the email and they subscribe, you can add them to a list. Um, uh, I'll, I'll show you the list we use. Um, or, so you can give, you know, if they want to subscribe to your weekly emails, we send out a weekly email about our sermon. They do that, or first time visitors. So you have different forms, or different places, contact points where people can give their mobile number, email address, and so on. So we have several of these on our website. First time they're a first time visitor, we send them here. They can enter their details. If they want to volunteer, again they enter their details. So these are all different touch points where we are collecting people's contact information, and it gets added to our email list. So we send emails, send emails regularly, but don't send too many. Don't send email every day. You know. So our rule is. Uh, Two plus one. That means every week, maximum, you send two emails. Plus one is an extra one, which it's like on some special cases, we will send an extra email, right? Uh, so, for example, if there's a funeral or something, or change in location or something like that, then that's the plus one, the additional one that we send. Otherwise, we, uh, our emails are just maximum two emails to our community. Uh, you know, nowadays you can a lot of uh, graphics that can be used along with the email, keep it error free, uh, keep your emails mobile friendly because a lot of people actually read their email on their mobile devices. Uh, use meaningful subject lines and get them, uh, get their attention. And also you can target your email, like you, whom you want to send it to. You know, if it's from a men's conference, send it to the men. If it's a ladies' conference, send it to the ladies, etc. Things like that. And um, you know, and, and and look for optimal days. Like somewhere in the middle of the week is good, uh, because beginning of the week everybody's very busy. End of the week they're getting ready to come back to service and worship. So somewhere in the middle of the week is a good point. And then give people an option to unsubscribe. They don't want to receive it. They should be free to opt out of that. So we always include that. Now, 
use uh, so use what we refer to as a list manager where uh, so that means when you're sending an email uh, you don't know you're not manually doing this but you have a software that manages your lists and you can send it from there i'll just quickly show it to you so uh, again this is an open source software php list uh, let me just uh, take a moment to share that with you now i got to uh, just a minute All right, let me just uh, share my screen. I'll just show, quickly show you the what I'm what am I talking about. So we use uh, we use what we refer to as uh, PHP list. Mm -hmm. um, so we, this is our PHP list manager. This is where we manage our email uh, from where we send out our email. So it's just a, it's an open source software. So you can have subscribers. Yeah, that means these are people. So when they subscribe through our, our uh, website, they get added in directly. They get added into this mail list manager. So let's say right now there are thirty-seven thousand four hundred seventy-seven people or email IDs. Right now, uh, if they are blacklisted, that means they have opted out or their email bounced back. You know, maybe it's a bad email, whatever. So then out of that, uh, the, sorry, this number has been uh, blacklisted. It means we, we won't send it to them. They either unsubscribe or whatever. And so emails won't go to them. So let's say about 33,000 effectively uh, are there. And then we actually can create lists. That means you can put them in categories. So for example, and this is just an example here, we have, uh, you know, by locations, uh, ministers in India, and we put two, two lists here, but uh, internal outreach, outreach churches, these people are in Hindi, uh, ministers worldwide, uh, youth, Bible college, etc. Uh, so these are categories. And let me see here. So when people sign up on a website, they go into these groups, these are we used to have TV programs, so those responses there. But I think we have, um, let me see here. I'm looking for the Sunday sermon. We have a list called Sunday sermon, uh, which, uh, so these are all first time visitors by year. So these are people who have come here. And, uh, Publication. Let me just look for Sunday sermons. Okay. So weekly sermon list. It's about 14,000 people on, on in this particular list. So uh, basically, when we set, you know, every week, Sunday or Monday of every week, we'll send an email to this particular list. Um, these are people who will receive that email. And uh, and, and you can see what happens uh, when you send an email. So it's called a campaign. So uh, we'll see some of the campaigns that are just over. So this power of the spoken word, was sent out um, and was sent out there. Now, um, uh, this statistics part is right now not working. We've got a problem with our latest version. But usually, what will happen is when somebody opens it up, we'll get a correct count here. So this one is not working. So we're not seeing the correct statistics. We have some problem with it. But the email was sent out to about 14,000 people. And uh, it took about 11 hours, 10, 10 minutes to spool this particular email to all these people. 
and uh, we'll be we, normally when if this part is working we'll be able to see you know how many actually read what comes back etc so basically when we set the email up here we can um, uh, you know just click a button and it'll go to all the lists and we can combine many lists so uh, the email can be sent to more than one person so this is our standard format of the email so we give a sermon title we have a standard format so people are sending it they know what to do uh, this is the content of that it's again following a standard format um, they enter these details uh, the footer is standard so they this and then they send it uh, we can select lots of lists and send it so uh, this is more like an automated way for us to send email so you just click a button and it sends it out to 14,000 people now when there is a different kind of announcement then we combine these uh, lists so we can send it if you want to send it to everybody uh, all the th you know all the 37 thousand whatever that come to us um, uh, number of people we can send it so uh, we can you know send the message uh, send the list the email to everybody on our list right so that's the advantage of using uh, a list php list uh, you can you know you can select uh, what you want and use it okay let me let's go back to the pdf Sorry. All right, I clicked the wrong thing. All right. So that was our email list manager, uh, where uh, you know we through which we sent out email, send out emails. Now initially, maybe when you have fifty email IDs or a hundred email IDs, it's easy. It's okay to do it manually. That you know you put it in groups of ten or twenty or and keep sending it. But when it's beyond that, it, it gets a little cumbersome to do it manually. So you need a, a email list manager like this to send. Now, of course, um, internally, when we are, you know, we communicate a lot with all our staff and all our people internally. Lots of emails come. Uh, people from the church keep sending emails. So now uh, there's a lot of other personal email communications that happen. Um, that that is also very useful uh, only point is that sometimes it gets too much uh so you know right now i personally personally i'm not I, i'm not able to keep up with all emails that come to me personally uh, it's just too many every day um so uh, we have other people handling a lot of the emails so for the church uh, we have uh, three or four people who handle different email IDs. So when emails are sent, uh, it goes to other individuals, and they are they're part of our communications team. So somebody handles emails that are for publications, uh, that are for book requests, that are for uh, our general contact email. They come in for prayer, for testimony, those kinds of things. Uh, our uh, Bible college, Bible college support. So there are different people handling those different emails. So we have created different, different, different email IDs, and different people are handling those mm, emails. Uh, but the emails that come directly to me uh, is also a lot, and it's very difficult to keep up with all of those emails. So I have to be, you know, I have to keep time to try and read them and uh, try to respond to some some of them. Um, Another important part these days is text messaging. So we talked a little bit about emails, um, uh, broadcast communications. Um, another part is text messaging, SMS and uh, messaging through uh, messaging apps. There used to be a time when SMS was a big deal, uh, when we used to send a lot of SMSs and all of that. But then uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, government at least in india a lot of government regulations came in and we could not send short sms's freely to people uh, because they, they required that people have to subscribe and all of those kinds of things and so we moved uh, from sending sms's to whatsapp messages um, 
So, uh, and, and just, you know, so basically a, a large number of people use WhatsApp and we use that. And of course there are other, you know, messaging apps as well that people use, but we do a lot of our uh, message, uh, messaging through WhatsApp. So we uh, try to keep these messages simple. We can use graphics and videos, of course. Uh, people can opt in and opt out. And we use uh, bulk messaging uh, service provider. We used to use SMS service providers, and then we stopped doing that because of restrictions. Now we use uh, bulk messaging on WhatsApp so we can broadcast messages to people. So remember, we collect their email ID and their passwords, uh, not passwords, email ID and their mobile numbers. And similarly, the mobile numbers go in go to uh, a list, a mobile number list. Again, we segment them over there. That means um, if they are a, a regular members, if they are visitors, if they are you know different uh, leaders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have different um, mobile number lists. So we can send broadcast messages to targeted groups. So usually it's our own people, church community that we send messages just to keep them informed, you know, uh, about things. Example, location, or uh, uh, an event that's coming up for which we want them to register, we send the messages on WhatsApp. So that's a good thing. And again, we follow the same rule: a maximum two uh, messages a week, uh, but not more. Now, only if it's necessary. We don't send messages all the time, but when there's a need, we can send a WhatsApp message. But maximum two messages. Don't send more than two. Otherwise, they'll in people will feel. Um, that we are intruding into their time and space. So we keep limit that. To, okay? So we use that, but use it carefully, use it meaningfully. So this is here one example from back then. Like we're sending an announcement about, about a song release in Hindi. This is how it goes. So a little graphic, some text, link to the YouTube, and so on. Um, the advantages of using uh, multimedia messaging is, you know, it's very easy. People, a lot of people will check emails. They may not, or they may check at some other time. But um, on their phones, people check immediately or quite frequently. So it's 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 highly likely that they're going to see it. Um, just follow some good practices when sending uh, messages. If you're using static images. Don't make them too big. Uh, keep the dimensions that are optimal. Typical. These are the typical nine, nine is to sixteen ratio. So you kind of fit one of these in. Uh, use JPEG file format. Uh, don't use too many colors and don't add too much text. Keep it nice and simple and easy. Similarly, if you're doing video, if you're sending a video or a link to a video, remember to uh, make sure it's not too big. Keep the video short. Don't you know? Send a one-hour sermon. <laughs> People that they can go watch on YouTube. Uh, again, these are optimal uh, ratio uh, for your video uh, viewing. Right. So just follow good practices when you're doing that. Another area. Now just changing. Another area where you can be used. We can engage with people digitally is through virtual meetings. So this is very good, especially, we, I mean, a lot of us got used to this uh, as we went through the pandemic, where we can connect with people online through video conference, conferencing tools, uh, popular ones are Slack or Google Meet, uh, a lot of other um, conferencing tools are available. And it's nice that, you know, uh, uh, we can connect with people. So right now, for example, this class is on Google Meet and others are, are connected to the class. It's a good thing that they can at least participate in the class uh, and, and share. So sometimes I may meet when when people want to meet with me one on one. Uh, I, we may just do a you know a, a, a Zoom meet, uh, especially if they're somewhere far away. Uh, then it makes it convenient, saves a lot of time. So I just schedule a call and we meet, and just we share and so on. So whether it's meeting with one person or meeting with a group of people, uh, making use of these uh, video conferencing tools are a good thing. Uh, we also 
uh, when we do our weekend schools, we make our weekend schools available on Zoom so people who are far away can actually participate in the weekend school, even if they can't come in person, they can at least share in uh, a fair amount of the, what's being taught and participate in it. So webinars are a good thing to do. Just some general uh, guidelines here when we are you know, using video conferencing, uh, make sure lighting is good. Um, and you know, if it's a private meeting, keep it private, don't make it public, use passcodes for people to connect. Uh, people uh, allow other people to share screen, uh, and uh, when you're not speaking, mute your microphone. I think all of us are kind of familiar with these good practices in video conferencing. Let's change a few more thoughts here. Um, now, the advantage of digital engagement is that we can reach globally. You know, we can we can be in one part of the world and we can serve people all over the world, and one of those ways is to use uh, content distribution platforms. So now we have platforms through which we can distribute content, whether it's in, uh, in digital format. So whether it's ebooks, podcasts, and videos. And many of us are familiar with videos, YouTube, and other channels. But you know, we're just mentioning that. So let's talk about ebooks. That means uh, books that are in digital format, whether they are in PDF format or with any uh, EPUB or, or dot, uh, MOBI format, different formats are there. Most common, of course, for us, for people are the PDF formats. And our books, and anyone can use these, but I'm just mentioning that our books are distributed on all of these platforms. I think we, uh, I, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's somewhere like 30 or 34 platforms through which our books are distributed globally. So it's a nice thing that right? we are here in Bangalore, but we can distribute those PDFs, not only through our website, but through so many of these distribution channels. So people sitting anywhere in the world, whatever they are comfortable with, whether it's Kindle or iBooks or Google Books or Barnes & Noble, Nook or whatever, Google Play Books, whatever they are comfortable with, they will find the other books and they'll be able to read it. So you can actually distribute your digital content, your books, uh, on so many of these. This is a few of these channels, uh, and there are many more that you could uh, make your books available and becomes available globally, and uh, people can find it and read it. Similarly, for audio, if you want to do podcasts, you can do this. Now, Google Podcasts, this, uh, it, they're kind of taking it down, and they're now moving, integrating it with uh, YouTube Music. But uh, you know whatever is there can just be moved. So uh, you know you, the audio that conversations, audio files that you want to release, you can release it through online channels, right? So uh, Google Podcasts or YouTube Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. So many, so many channels are there. And uh, we've said again, our some and audios are distributed on all of these channels again, in addition to our website. So. Uh, People have access to it. So where whatever they are comfortable with, they can you know listen to the podcast. Now um, the fact is all of these spaces are crowded, meaning there are literally hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people releasing digital content, whether it's books or audio or video, literally millions are right, uh, releasing content. So uh, it's important that uh, we should be searchable. We, people should find us, and I'll mention that a little later. Uh, on all of these distribution channels, whether you're distributing your PDFs, or you're distributing your audio files, or you're distributing YouTube videos, uh, they should be searchable. And, and, and we will talk about how, you know, how these uh, algorithms actually present your content to people who are looking for similar content. Right? So uh, we'll talk about that a little later. But now, just understand that we have, all of these channels are accessible to people. And you can release your content on this, whether it's your church sermons or your own podcast or the books that you write. And we are also familiar with the um, channels for videos. YouTube is the biggest uh, that we are all familiar with, a huge, huge audience. Um, Vimeo is also good. Uh, it's almost on, in terms of features, 
uh, it's pretty almost comparable to YouTube. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we have other places like Facebook and Instagram where you can share your videos that, that you do. A lot of other channels, of course. Right? So we are familiar with these. So the point is that, you know, um, uh, we today in, in digital engagement, we've got numerous options. You can create content, digital content. The sermon can be in digital format, and you can push it out. You can distribute it uh, to lots and lots of people uh, on through these digital platforms, and so many of them are available for free. Okay. Um, the last thing is a church app. Now, at the moment, we've taken down our APC church app because we uh, we were using a service provider. They got bought over, and a lot of transition happened. We are rebuilding our APC church app, uh, but the church app is going to become uh, a very important part of what we do. That uh, we're going to be uh, moving a lot of our engagement from the traditional website to the app because we, you know, people are getting more and more comfortable using apps on their phone, and you're doing a lot of things through an app that's running on their phone. So uh, I, I won't be able to show you uh, about, uh, you know, our church app right now, but uh, this is something uh, of, of focus, or a lot of focus and effort on what we're doing. So. You can build a nice app for your church, and there are platforms available, or you can you know, get people to build it for you and engage uh, through the church app. Um, so these are some ideas for digital engagement. What we've talked about is yeah, you can use websites, emails, messaging, multimedia messaging services. You can use um, a distribution of digital content through in different formats, PDFs, audio, video, distributed. Uh, you could also use uh, an app as another form of engagement, right? Uh, any questions on this before we uh, go to our next chapter, which I think is on uh, social, uh, sorry, I'm going to share with you some guidelines for graphics and videos, and then we get into social media. Uh, any questions so far? Any thoughts? Everybody's with me so far? OK. So I'm just giving you an exposure to various things. Um, you're not necessarily getting into all the technical details, but these are options. And and you can think about, you know, you, you know if you create two ways to do a podcast um, or use any of these other channels, um, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful way to reach people. Let me now just talk um, a little bit about some um, some practices that uh, we try to follow for our graphics and video. So that's lesson number twelve. Just some guidelines, right? Uh, and I've uh, also given you some links there that you can go online to uh, to to you know to learn about how to, how to use these effectively now um, remember it's it's not enough just to produce something it's got to be good it's got to be done well for people to make use of it and to engage uh, with the content so that's why we have guidelines for graphics and videos so when you're thinking about generally from in any form of media uh, try to you know stay current with the what's happening the, the, the way it's being done today, the style, the the look, the feel, how people are doing. So we need to stay current with the latest trends in terms of how things are being done without compromising right the word and how we are, what we are communicating. So it's a communication process. When you're using a graphics or video, you're actually communicating to people. So be clear about what the message you want to convey and to whom you are speaking. Uh, fonts, use simple, readable fonts. Keep the fonts very simple. Don't you know, use fancy things that people don't understand. Keep color choices that are relevant, sensitive, and, uh, and you know, don't overcrowd it with colors. Don't put all kinds of colors in it. Because people are paying attention to all these things. They're seeing all this. So you know, it's not just 
a random mix of colors. Uh, there has to be a liberal use of space. Don't overcrowd your image or your video. And um, and uh, understand visual hierarchy. That means you know when somebody sees something, their eyes will go first to what's biggest, right? The heaviest, and then they will begin to read the smaller, smaller things. So what is stated in the heaviest must be impactful, right? So for example, if you're looking at this PDF, you see that this is big, right? So you're going to read this first. What is it? it says general guidelines using media. So that's what we'll, you'll read first. Then after that, you'll start reading the smaller points. So the heaviest should be the most important. Uh, when you're saying something, then it was done. Right. Um, graphic design, there are lots and lots of different software packages that are available. Uh, we use uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, the entire suite of things. Our team uses it. There are also free applications today, Canva and so on. And uh, a lot of these also do AI generated images, which are interesting uh, that we can tap into um, if appropriate. Some guidelines when you're working with graphics, you know, keep the style, keep it contemporary, keep it relevant and staying true to the word. Uh, be careful of the images that you use because you're a church or a ministry. Images must be clean, it must not be suggestive, questionable, inappropriate, violent, indecent, or provocative. Right? So be very careful, be thoughtful about the images that you're using because we are a church and a ministry. Uh, the font and style must be clear and legible. Uh, don't use things that will strain the eye, they can't read what you, you know, what's on it. Uh, there has to be uniformity, so try to keep things uniform across all expressions whether it's graphics and video or other formats uh, keep the font uniform so uh, people see you know what we call as a brand or, or, or a certain way in which this organization is communicating so that consistency is important um, and then also wherever possible use it use spaces of pictures that are relatable to the audience right uh, so wherever possible, I'm not saying it's always possible, wherever possible, uh, the, the faces that you show should be relevant, relatable to whom you're targeting or your primary audience. Um, similarly, when you're creating videos, uh, be careful uh, about the images, videos, and songs. Uh, don't put anything that's inappropriate, because people are going to ask, hey, how come you use this kind of an image or video? So you have to think about it very carefully and um, you know don't use if you're in doubt check with the pastor say hey is it okay is it not okay so on and um, and uh, if you're using people from the congregation show them in good light and don't don't show bad things and all that because you know it's, it's being public you don't want to uh, do something that's not appropriate uh, and be careful don't show you know uh, things that could be violent or could put people at risk, like children doing jumps or things like that. You know, uh, be careful on that. Sometimes, unknowingly, people include those things in their videos that they're doing, and then there's a reaction from people. Uh, of course, you, we know this that keep your video short, uh, depending on the platform in which it's being released. Uh, you make subtitles available. And nowadays, a lot of these are automatically generated by the platform. Um, uh, use transcripts. So, you know, again, this is a nice thing these days. All of this is automatically generated. So, in our sermons on our website, they just choose the transcript option. There's automatically uh, Vimeo generates a transcript. YouTube generates a transcript. So that that's very useful. Uh, where you're using audio voices, keep the voices clear. Uh, it should be exciting. Uh, the voice re reiterates the message that is coming across through the graphics and through the video. And um, again, when you're using graphics and video, use consistent fonts. Um, and um, also, we standardize a lot of things. Right? For instance, um, when we mention date, time, venue, uh, we, we we use a standard format, 
Like, so we use short forms like month for the day of the week. Uh, we follow uh, 12 hour, 2 p.m. So it's easy for people to understand. We don't use the 24 hour format. And then the way we put the month, day, month, time, and year, you know, it's it's something that uh, we we follow a standard format. And we keep it international. So we don't use Indian format or American format or because the dates are all a different format. So we intentionally put day like Tuesday, January 23rd. So Tuesday, Jan 23, 20, you know, uh, the year. Okay. So then no because people can be looking at it from any part of the world. So it should be clear. There shouldn't be any confusion. Oh, is that date in Indian format? Is that day in you know uh, what, what what format it is? So to use an international format, which every it's clear to anybody from any part of the world, uh, it makes it easy. So we should be mindful of this because a lot of digital content is available to everybody, right? And uh, we make sure that the venue where the event is happening is stated very clearly. We can give a Google Map link and so on. And um, where all possible, use faces of people that are relatable to the audience and um, be sensitive. You know, if it's, uh, if it's um, pictures of people from the church, uh, take consent for parents, especially when it's children or teenagers, take consent from where it's needed. There are a lot of places where you can get free free graphics, videos, fonts, music. So I just listed, given a big list of things where you can download some, maybe licensed, but many of them are free. And you can get graphics and videos from these websites if you would like to use them. The last point, which I had mentioned earlier, is that whenever you're creating graphics and videos, remember, it's like a huge ocean of, you know, content that's out there in the digital world. So it's important that what you put out is uh, searchable and it is presented to the people who would be looking for those kinds of content. So how do we make that happen? Here's some simple things that we can do. First of all, use title. What titles do you use for the videos? Because the search engines start here they look at your title so uh, the title should be relevant it should be something that people would search for and um, and uh, use um, of course the title should accurately represent the content you can't put some random put different content no it should represent what it is but it should be searchable and then you also use relevant hashtags uh, which tell basically it's saying this is what this content is about, right? So use relevant hashtags. Again, very important is the description. So there is a description section to a lot of these videos and images. What you put there is going to help search engines uh, present the content to uh, people who are interested, right? So even if you're using images, uh, how can your images? Uh, be you know rank highly. So one is use high high quality. Uh, customize the file name. Uh, the text on the image and the file name are important. So you use something that that would be you know searchable. Use give it and don't say you know just image one dot jpg. No, use a, a file name that's intelligent and something that will help in your searches. Right. Uh, use um, relevant keywords. Uh, on the text of the image, use alt tags because in some places um, that's used uh, rather than the image itself to present it to people. And uh, and uh, better possible, you try to host these images on your site. That's for your site. Okay. Similar thing for videos. You know, um, uh, if there's a transcript that'll help, there's a thumbnail image that'll help. What title and description you're giving for the video will help, um, and then um, uh, um, so if 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 you're putting the video on a page, uh, you know focus make uh, focus that video uh, in that page, and don't put the video out in so many places. Um, then Google doesn't it sees that it's just duplicate content. 
So understand, you know, basically, uh, just a quick idea here how, how all this happens. There's millions of videos out there, millions. So Google has to suggest a few to the user. Right? Of course, uh, there will be Google is tracking this user's behavior, the history, and the context. And then it's going to, you know, in, in, in literally in milliseconds, pull out of this millions of videos and uh, rank them and then present a few to the to the user how does it happen well keywords are important um, uh, these keywords are what you put in your file name your title your description your scripts so that's how is there enough of course nowadays it will actually go through the content of the video uh, thumbnails um, so you know, use compelling keywords, uh, and then there is uh, the hashtags that you use uh, that are uh, that that are used to also uh, rank or link the webs that video to relevant to what's relevant to the user. So use hashtags uh, uh, intelligently, and. Uh, um yeah so here are just ideas to you know to make these videos or to promote your videos online and so on so uh just i think the things that, that would be very important or useful for us to understand is that what you put along with the video uh, in addition to the content of the video of course uh, the tags and so on will will enable the search engine algorithm to take it and present it to people of course, the user's behavior is also their history and their interest is also important. Okay, but what we can do is the, in the first six, seven things are uh, things that we can do every time you post a video, take care of these things, and then from there, the video is presented to the users. The last point that I want to mention is that whenever you're using songs, um, make sure that you give credits um, and songs from other. Uh, bands or copyrighted songs uh, and I've just given a sample here of how you can give a credit to a song as part of your uh, description right uh, details for credits uh, so you say credits song artist so on so it, it APC worship team may be singing the song but then this this is what will be in that description of the video that means we are saying that our team is singing a song by these people so uh, we are acknowledging their copyright to the song we are just using it so when you do this then youtube will not block the video that has the song if we don't do this then in parts of the world where the copyright is important that video will be blocked people won't be able to see the video uh, it'll be blocked by youtube because of copyright infringement so just keep this in mind so the best thing is if you're using any of these songs when you want the video to be made visible give credits in the description of the video and uh, it'll keep things safe okay. all right any questions so far All right, so um, let's take a break. And then when we come back, I will spend a little, little bit of time talking about social media. Right? Uh, again, this is a big area. It has um, you know, lots and lots of people are doing it. So how can a church or a ministry just engage with social media platform? Just some thoughts on that. And then we will uh, pause for today right so let's go for a break come back in 10 minutes then we'll talk about social media and uh, then we we'll close for the day right see you in 10 minutes thanks <laughs> 